Ah, the Pacific Northwest, or the PNW. It's a magical place where the majestic mountains, lush evergreens, rocky beaches, and bustling city combine. In this episode, we'll be exploring some of Washington State. I'm Nicole, and this is Nicole Goes Exploring. If you saw my other videos, you know I was just in Maui. It took over 24 hours to get from Ohio to my condo in Maui. So to avoid another long travel day, I found a five hour nonstop flight from Maui to Seattle and I decided to head there for a pit stop and to explore some of the Pacific Northwest. Okay, are you ready for this? Cause I sure wasn't. This place is quite possibly my dream home. I couldn't afford it then. Okay, so excited. Okay, I'm gonna try to kayak, even though I should go to sleep. Wish me luck. Looks like my best bet is going to be this canoe. So I have to see if I can get it out. If there's one thing I'm good at, it's failing at adventuring, but I don't let it stop me from trying. I wasn't raised on most of the outdoorsy things I do, so it's usually a learning experience and me being a fish out of water. Case in point, trying to canoe by myself on this lake. <laughs> okay, so like I'm in the canoe, but I don't wanna go anywhere because I don't know how I'm gonna get out of it. <laughs> Okay, so maybe I was a little bummed that I wasn't comfortable enough to get out on the lake yet, but I knew it wasn't my last day and I could try again later. So I headed inside to warm up by the fireplace and watch some Netflix. Morning. Today I'm at one of my most favorite places in the world, the Skagit Valley Tulip Festival. And I have purchased a photography pass so I could enter Tulip Town two hours early to take some pictures. In 2011, five years after graduating high school, I decided to go to college in Seattle. In 2012, during my work study program, my coworker told me about the Tulip Festival and suggested I check it out. I was a bit homesick and on the drive from Seattle to Mount Vernon, I found myself surrounded by open fields, driving along country roads, and even spotted some cows. It was like I got a piece of Ohio back and it came at such a needed time. I explored the Tulip Festival and completely fell in love with the beauty of it. I visited several times while I lived in Seattle, but it had been seven years since I last saw this place. This time I purchased a photography pass to enjoy it to the fullest. The photography pass gave me general admission, but also gave me access to enter two hours early and state pass closing to view the sunset. In total, it cost me $113.06 and it was worth every penny. Since I had several hours before sunset, I headed back to my Airbnb for canoe attempt number two. After speaking with my awesome Airbnb host, Kat, she informed me that the canoe was capable of being steered by one person. That gave me enough courage and determination to try canoeing one more time. Keep an eye out for the little orange dots spinning in circles. Yep, that's me, just trying to figure out how to go against the current and get past the two big logs by the dock without tipping my canoe. It may not have been the most graceful paddling, but attempt number two was a success. Thank you. 
sun is setting, so I am just finishing up. I got some flowers and the guy gave me one of them for free. It was really nice. And then I have the photography pass so I'm able to stay for sunset. And it's almost there, so I have to leave soon, but it's been fun taking a bunch of photos with a few people here. When you think of the Pacific Northwest, you probably think of rugged mountain peaks, rich evergreen forests, maybe even a cabin in the woods. I knew I wanted to get farther away from the city and have a little break from the hustle and bustle. I'd planned to do some hiking in the area, but that fell through, which was fine because I focus on relaxing and rejuvenating here at Logger's Landing. Airbnb. It's an index Washington and it has river access. And those are the steps for the river access. There's my Airbnb. There's a hot tub over there. It's quite a climb. Our trains that go by it literally shakes the cabin and now there's I don't know I saw somebody moving a porta potty on the track so um, yeah they're transporting things it is far from peaceful here which I you know am kind of okay with because I feel like bear opportunity drops down tremendously but the road to get here was crazy and you really felt like you were going to the middle of nowhere which to be fair it brings you to this river but then you get here, you've got neighbors on both sides. You can hear them. There's somebody who's been trying to cut down a tree the whole time I've been here. So I definitely don't feel alone. And I'm okay with that for the most part. It's just loud. <laughs> Regardless of the noise, I spent the day soaking in the beautiful views, relaxing, and doing some photography. It was time to check out of my cabin and head back to civilization. I had an early start because Seattle is about an hour away from Index, Washington, and I was meeting up with my awesome friend Maria. I didn't do much vlogging today because I got to spend the day with her and then her family hosted me for a delicious dinner. So shout out to them for hosting me. It was so nice to be able to hang out with friends while I was in town. park in Washington. It's my last day here so I am just 
enjoying a nice little trail. On most of my trips, I try to focus on doing new things, but when I visit Seattle, I like to visit some of my old stomping grounds. Since it was my last day in Washington, I wanted to make sure that I visited one of my favorite local coffee shops, Richmond Beach Coffee Co. My tip is to go there, grab some lunch and some bubble tea, my favorite is red bean, then head to Richmond Beach. It's really close by. It's a great place to see the mountains, watch the water, and if you're there at low tide, you'll probably see some starfish. This was my favorite park to come to when I lived here and I'm happy to see that it is still big and beautiful and not destroyed. Mm -hmm. 